Yeah. So, one of the first thing you need to do uh, uh, is to get your uh, trailhead dot salesforce dot com registration done. Yeah. This is the link trailhead dot salesforce dot com. This is the official study material of Salesforce, and we'll go strictly with this. And what you need to do when you uh, open this link, first you have to sign up. You can sign up using Gmail ID or anything of the sort. I would. I would always advise to have your LinkedIn account associated with it. Okay. So when you go here, uh, is the link shared already uh, shown? Or the trailhead, which we have on the WhatsApp group? If the link is not shared, this is basically, if you can search with Bong Bong, you will see Bong Bong Administrator Trail, which comprises of three trails, Admin Beginner, Admin Intermediate, Admin Advanced. And then we also have a certification preparation. So four trails, basically, uh, that is part of this whole trail mix. This is exactly the material which we want everybody to uh, complete. So I think this is the link you have. Please store this out. And you need to start with admin beginner then uh, admin intermediate and then you have to do the admin advanced right and then uh, if it, there is a dedicated mentor already associated with your whatsapp group i think it is An anchita right so uh, what you need to uh, anytime you're stuck you are happy to call that person and get yourself uh, uh, like any 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 kind of help you want get her time and she'll be available around the clock every day uh, on the classes we will not cover how to do things in salesforce this is already self explanatory and in the training material which you are seeing you are already getting that what are we covering in the class in the class we are covering why why are you doing what you are doing the, the problem is that in the training materials we do not cover that part no no training material will say you why, right? All the trainings which Salesforce will impart or any other academies are imparting would be how to do things. And how to do things, I think, anybody can learn on their own. It's not a rocket science thing. But why is basically the requirement which will help you crack interviews, take decisions, come up with solutions for customers, right? Because why will take experience uh only an experienced person can tell you why so we will cover why part most of the time in the classes if you're stuck anywhere on the how part we will definitely go and help you out but try to do it on your own and with the mentor self over the over the week and get yourself uh habituated with uh with the features of salesforce but on the class we'll definitely go into the deep, deep into the concepts and stuff any questions so far Cool. Shiva, any, uh, anything, any problem from your side? All good? Yeah, all good. I will probably follow that uh, the, the same thing which you so, so as I said, whatever I've said it, then I will probably want to start from scratch. Um, that's the reason why I was like, okay. as I discussed with you, that's the my primary object how I'm looking at it. Right? So I will keep it as if that I don't know anything. Yeah. Yes, I will start from scratch itself because we have a person who is basically starting from scratch. Uh, though he's 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 an experienced people, so we'll keep it minutely so that it uh, helps everybody. So let's jump into our session. I love whiteboards more than PowerPoint presentations because I used to fall asleep when I used to see PowerPoint presentations. That's the reason why I stopped using PowerPoint presentations for my trainings. So I love the whiteboard and I scribble a lot. Uh, please bear with me. That's that would be my style of teaching. I hope you do not object to that. Let me know if you are facing any problem in that. Yeah. Well, let's start today and see how things go. You're able to see my screen, right? My yes. whiteboard. Yes. 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 Yeah. Great. So what is uh, software? We are talking about software all the time, right? I don't know uh, uh, if people have purchased softwares in CDs or DVDs. I think uh, Shiva definitely has, but I don't know about Gaurav. Uh, Gaurav seems to be a little younger. 
I don't know. Gaurav, have you ever purchased software in CDs or DVDs? No, sir. No. So I was expecting that. Yeah. So uh, software used to come in CDs and DVDs. Like uh, we used to, uh, in our college, nobody used to buy that. That's a different story. But uh, we used to get softwares in, in the form of CDs and DVDs, right? Uh, that was physical material. We used to install softwares on our desktops. And used to use software, right? But that was the primary mode of delivery of software. So how software was used by people. So first thing was installation into their desktop, and then basically using a software. But things changed. Nowadays, software has moved into a installable one-time fee to a rental service. So we call this software as a service. What is the difference between a software and a software as a service? Well, the software is something which you pay upfront and you give the physical medium and you install. You will keep on purchasing uh, the higher versions again and again, install it, upgrade it on your own, on your devices, and you will run it. But nowadays, software is moving into service platform and more so with the advent of cloud. We'll come to cloud in a little while. So software is a service means now it is a rental service. It's like you use the medium, Every month, I take a payment from you. So people have stopped buying flats. People are now renting flats. Yeah, so that's 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 the medium. Because what gives the ability for the person to shift their software any day? The moment they want to change to a different service provider, they will go and change their software. They will stop paying anybody, the person whom they were using the software. They will stop paying it, and they will move on to another person. And that is where this term came along that's called software as a service. SaaS, uh, that, that is also commonly uh, used. And not only SaaS, we also will hear a term called PaaS, which is platform as a service. Uh, what is platform as a service? Platform as a service is that there is a underlying framework on which you can build a software. I will talk about PaaS a little while later, but let's understand SaaS a little bit more. So this is SaaS we understand. That's a rental service of a software. I am not paying any upfront fee. I'm paying every month for using that software. Nowadays, most of the software you will see will be a SaaS software. It be be it in office software, be it be it a uh, be it a any uh, website, anything, uh, or even you are going with a corporate uh, email account. Everything is SaaS. So now, how is this related to cloud? We are also using a term called cloud. So uh, the easiest way of understanding cloud is that uh, a software which runs without the dependency of any uh, personal system. That means you can run this on a browser, probably. If your uh, system, if your uh, there is nothing to install at your end, you in your devices. How, what kind of software will that be? Probably a software that runs on a browser, right? So that is where the cloud software came into picture, wherein we are saying that you don't have to, uh, uh, like, you do not have any infrastructure to maintain at all. You just need a browser to run the software. And the underlying infrastructure, everything, the servers and everything is basically maintained by somebody else. We do not need to worry about it. For personal people, it, it is just like opening in the, in a browser and using a software uh, not to install anything uh, but the uh, uh, but the difference for a corporate person is that in corporate world we used to have different servers and the servers used to host softwares which was used by multiple people so that they can share data that whole concept has gone out so we are saying in the cloud era that you maintain your business well. You are probably a, a seller of a shoe. Your core competency is selling shoes. Why will you go ahead and maintain a server? That is becoming more and more difficult nowadays. Because now the servers is going to face a huge viral attacks. You have to upgrade those. You have to keep a person in the payroll just for maintaining servers. There will be downtime of servers, uptime, mirroring of your data a huge maintenance work of, of servers and you are a seller of a shoe it's not your core competency neither you should work on that part 
allow the best minds of the world, best technologists in the world, maintain the servers for you, and you just get into an agreement that your data is safe with them. That is where the cloud came into picture. And whatever softwares we see nowadays, most of them would be cloud softwares. Like it starts with your Gmail. Gmail is a cloud product. It's a Google product. Everything you're seeing, probably you are using a cloud product. So uh, Salesforce is also a cloud product. And probably one of the earliest cloud products. And cloud can be of two types. One is a private cloud. One can be public cloud. Private cloud is means uh, that is a cloud offering, but it is owned by the person, that organization, right? I own my own instance, but it is it is a cloud uh, infrastructure, but I own that. And that is, another is a public, public cloud offering. Public cloud means it is shared infrastructure, wherein many people use that server. For, Private means a dedicated server for only for you, but not maintained by you. Maintained by, of course, a provider. But public cloud is basically maintained by them, and they are also uh, sharing that server. So wherein now you see the option of if the private server is there, then the data is only related to one client, one organization, right? But when I'm sharing a server, then the data is from multiple clients, right? Client one, client two. Let's see an example. I think client one, client two doesn't make much sense. So I have a cloud server, which is maintained by Salesforce. And Salesforce is basically has two clients. One client is Nokia. Another client is uh, Vodafone. Now, both are using Salesforce. Probably both are using the same server. And they are competitors. So Nokia does not want Vodafone to see their data. Vodafone does not want Nokia to see their data. There, there will be a huge problem, right? They will. So the same server probably is hosting both the uh, both the Salesforce instances, for one for Vodafone, one for Nokia. And both of them are storing their data here. And they have multiple users, maybe user 1 to user 100. And here, Nokia also has user one to user 100. Who are these users? The users are probably the salespeople who are selling. Uh, users are maybe service people who are basically working with their customers. Salesforce is a CRM, which is customer relationship management. We'll come to that a little while later. So all the Nokia employees are storing data in Salesforce. All the Vodafone employees are storing data into Salesforce in the same server. How are we making sure that this data is not basically uh, leaking across? That is where the concept of org comes into picture. Org means organization short form. So in the same server, probably there is org one and org two. Org one is basically assigned to Nokia and org two is assigned to Vodafone. That org ID is basically used by Salesforce to separate the data out for different organizations. So all the people who are logging into from Nokia side will only be seeing data which is living in org one. All the people who are logging into Vodafone will be only seeing data logging into login. Two. Both the people will probably log in using login.salesforce.com. Now, uh, we will be saying, how do we do it? It's the same thing. I open gmail.com, you open gmail.com. I don't come to your mailbox, you don't come to my mailbox, right? Because your login is associated to your mailbox, my login is associated to my mailbox. Similarly, all these logins, 100 logins, is associated to org1, and these 100 logins are associated to org2. That is why you will never be logged into a different org. So every org is separate. Every data is completely bifurcated. Not only data, that Salesforce instance can be also configured. And what we, we use the temple metadata can also be different. And we'll discuss what that is. It's an introductory session, so don't get overwhelmed. If you have any qu queries, let me know. Uh, so we understand now this cloud offering. So when multiple server clients are basically using the same server, that we call a multi-tenant architecture.
that means shared architecture the same server is basically is utilized by uh, multiple uh, organizations and they are storing their data and they are not seeing each other's data right it is just like living in a flat together you are a uh, you have a flat number 100 i live in flat number 101 we are neighbors uh, we use some things which is common what are the things which is common probably the water supply or the water tank on the top of our terrace the terrace to like dry our clothes we might have separate sections there on our terrace but both of us are using the staircase both of us are using the lifts so these are common things which uh, all the tenants of that flat will be using but I will not get into your house or your flat or you cannot get into my flat, right? It's a private space. So there is private uh, things. That means the data. And there can be some shared, uh, shared infrastructure, which both of us are using. And that is the benefit of a multi-tenant architecture. So far, so good. Anything, any questions from Gaurav and Priyanka? I think Shiva knows it quite well. No, sir, all of them. All of them. Okay. Yeah, tell me. No question so far? No, sir. Good. So we understood what Salesforce is built on. Salesforce is only public cloud. Salesforce does not offer pub, uh, private cloud. If I under, uh, 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 for for the core product which I am talking about. Okay. The core product is called Salesforce.com. That product uh, has again there are many uh, SaaS products Salesforce will sell. We will talk about the first SaaS product, which is called Sales Cloud. OK. So say the same platform. Yeah, go ahead. So basically, uh, so what is private cloud? Is private cloud used by only one person or only one company? Private cloud is used by only one organization. OK. They will only have their data that is almost like owned by them, though not maintained by them, maintained by Think about that this offering is given by AWS. AWS gives private cloud. Okay. So private, then they, you see you are the owner of that uh, infrastructure, it, or the whole infrastructure. But actually, it is maintained by AWS, right? Okay. So, but uh, Salesforce will not give it give that way. Salesforce will only allow you to create an org. And that will be in different servers. Sometimes uh, some customers say that I need a server which is in my country only. In that case, uh, uh, Salesforce will al allocate a server which is uh, in that boundary or, or that country. Yeah, in so India. Good. In that case, public server also be a private, right? Not private. It will be a public server, but it the data center is in that country. So that same server will be utilized by uh, other customers in that country. Achoo. OK, yes, no. but it does not matter. You don't care which server is basically hosting your org because Salesforce is also mirroring it across a different geography, mirroring it to save your data. They have a BCP policy, business continuity plan. So if there is a flood in India and data center is just stuck, in that case, you, you still can keep on working. Right. So those are all nitty gritties which Salesforce will do so that they can save and save your business continuity. So there are different mirroring techniques, which is also applied there. So uh, and uh, Shiva is directly from Salesforce. Shiva can keep on pitching me. Shiva, feel free to correct me also if you have latest data, because you know better. So, uh, so that is the multi-tenant architecture, which we have uh, understood. Now we are talking about the first product of Salesforce. There are many products, as I said. We'll talk about Sales Cloud. Before that, let's understand what is the concept of CRM. Salesforce started off as a CRM and is still the world number one CRM. What is CRM? CRM is the customer relationship management tool. Why do we need a customer relationship management tool? We need an ability to store all the customer's data at one position and use it for multiple departments so that there is a continuity in my customer engagement. Like there can be separate de several de departments uh, in an organization which is selling. Think about it. Let's talk about uh, who will use a CRM first. Okay. 
who do you think will use a CRM? First, when we talk about CRM, the concept of customer will come. So let's define a customer first. Gaurav, what do you think is a customer? To whom we sell product. To whom we sell product. OK, very well. So product or services. Right nowadays, product services, uh, product or services. Right? Either I sell a product or a service to a person that is basically my customer. If that is a customer, then I am a seller, right? So let's have this great divide called seller and buyer. Buyer is also the customer, right? So the seller can be selling service, seller can be selling products. Now, who do you think is requires a CRM, the seller or the buyer? Mm, customer relation with seller. Seller. The seller will go for a CRM. Why? Seller wants to know whom I am, I am selling it. What are the engagements that is done by my employees? How can I resell more products to them? Do I have a uh, prospect of getting a new customer? All that information is stored in a CRM. That's why it makes seller a better salesman. It makes better uh, processes of selling. That means sales process, service process, marketing process, etc. Any other processes which are there in a selling organization, those can be optimized through a CRM process or through a CRM software. Okay. So seller is buying that. Who is using that? In the seller side, who is using? Probably the employees of that selling organization, right? So the employees of the selling organization are the people who are logging into Salesforce. These people in Salesforce terminology are called users. User is also a table which is automatically given by Salesforce in Sales Cloud to store all the people who are logging in. Logging in from where? From the selling organization. They are logging in to a org. As we said, org is a clear differentiated space wherein you can show, store data and share data across different users. Because the employees of sell, selling organization need the data to see each other's data. Otherwise, they cannot collaborate. They cannot work together. right? Now the buyer. Do you think the buyer is a person or a company? Priyanka, buyer can be a person or a company. Seller most of the time is a company, right? Or an entity that has two registries. Who is a buyer? Company. Can it be a person? Individual person. Gaurav, can you sell directly to an individual? Of course you can, right? Yes. You are going to a Reebok showroom and you are purchasing a shoe. That is not a purchase done by a company. It is done by an individual. But if you are working in a company called TCS and TCS is doing a marathon, and that in marathon, they want to give 200 shoes to their employees so that they can run their marathon. TCS will go to Reebok and say, I need 200 shoes. So either a TCS is going for a for a deal of 200 shoes or an individual is walking into the showroom and they are purchasing one shoe for themselves. Both is a valid sale. Both is a valid customer for business. When a company is buying, we call this a B2B scenario. Business to business, that means a company is buying from another company. When an individual is buying from a company, then we call it is a B2C, business to customer. There are two kinds of business. There can be minor integrities. There are some complexities. But on a broader scale, let's only look at B2B and B2C. OK? So there are two kinds of selling possibilities. A company can sell B2B. A company can sell to B2C. Both these scenarios can be handled by 
Salesforce CRM Sales Cloud. Okay, now let us see how it is handled. Salesforce Sales Cloud gives you a table called account. This account table is used to store the details of the companies. It also gives a table to store contacts. It is, uh, it is, uh, it is the table which stores the values of the employees of these companies. Because when you are selling or when you are talking, when you are a seller and you are talking to your buyer and the buyer is a company, actually you are not talking to that company. You are talking to an employee of that company or the owner of that company, right? Actually, you are talking to an individual, end of the day. So even if the company information is with you, actually the interaction is happening with the contacts of that company. So you need not only the company information, but also need the employee's information with whom you are talking. It can be employee or it can be an influencer of, of that company or it can be the owner of the company. Does not matter. I'm just saying the contacts that is that that is where you will store everything. The owner of the company's information, the employee of the company's information, like TCS is ordering 200 shoes to Reebok. So who is basically the contact? The account is basically TCS. The contact is probably the HR manager. Who is basically giving the order for the marathon race uh, to uh, Reebok and say, I need 200 pairs of shoes. I am arranging a marathon event for my employees. There will be, the, uh, you talk to me and uh, negotiate the price with me and I will give you the order. So actually, you are talking to an HR manager that is an employee of TCS. And basically, that is the person with whom actually you, that is the customer actually you have. So when we say customer, in a B2B scenario, both of these tables will comprise as customer. So customer data is basically stored in two tables, an account and a contact. Now, what is the relationship between account and contact? Uh, when we say relationship, there can be three relationships in IT world between two tables. We are talking about two tables right here. I think tables as Excel spreadsheets, in a Excel, right? In Excel, you have several tabs. Those are several several sheets. Think account as the first sheet, contact as the second sheet. What is the relationship between the first sheet and the second sheet? Relationship can be of two types. Sorry, three types. One to one. If there is a one to one relationship, probably you have to ask the question why there are two different tables. Makes no sense almost. There can be one to many. Many is denoted by n. n means any number. Or it can be many to many. What is many to many relations? This confuses a hell out of people. Many to many relationship means one to many relationship from both sides. What, what actually that means? Let's talk about two tables and we'll see some values. So I am writing a account table. I am also writing a contact table. So let's have some values in my account table. Let's have some values on contact table. Now uh, let's uh, tackle our uh, uh, sense uh, like uh, common senses and uh, let's uh, think. So my customer is TCS and my person of contacting in HR is the HR manager. Okay, so this is the scenario. Why this table? What is the columns uh, which I think of having in account and contact? I will let Gaurav and Priyanka give a try. Gaurav, what would be the column names of this table? Do you think? Account, you company uh, account, name. Company name. Okay. So name is of course yeah. needed to store TCS. You will be surprised to know that name is the only mandatory column given by Salesforce. You don't have to store anything else in account. Okay. If your organization needs some other information, that has to be customized or configured in, into the system. 
bare minimum in sales cloud name is the only field which you have to put back so here you are storing tcs in contact what is the bare minimum information you need to store mail id phone numbers is it is it is it is it is it uh, mandatory to store that uh, like you will are you sure you will get that well in salesforce salesforce gives only the last name as the mandatory field even the first name is not mandatory so last name is the only mandatory mandatory fields are denoted with a red star uh, will come in salesforce and we'll see this so in account i have stored uh, first in uh, the uh, pcs and probably shiva is my hr manager today so shiva is the last time here what is your first name subramaniam no my first and last name both will come in this <laughs> so shiva shiva is my hr manager from tcs who is basically the person with whom i am doing my deal and shiva says oh no i am not the only guy you have to also consult with my finance department my finance department head is basically animesh banerji so another contact come into picture now i am the user who is who is the salesman the best salesman probably is shobhanjit ghosh right we have talked about him a lot so shobhanjit ghosh from rebok is the user his his information is again stored in another table called user that is also given by salesforce okay we'll see all these tables later so shobhanjit ghosh is logging into salesforce he is now he has created an account with the name called tcs he has now created two contacts one is shiva who is the hr manager one is animesh banerji who is basically finance head of tcs these are the two people with whom he is talking so that he can close his deal of 200 shoes what is the relationship do you think between account and contact is this one to one one to many or many to many one to many one to many why one to many because this tcs is associated to shiva and also associated to animesh banerji but how do we do this association the association is always done or relationship build is always done from the many side just like think about your identity card your identity card will always have your father's name or mother's name your mother's identity card will not have their children's name isn't it they will have their father's or mother's name on their identity card similarly this relationship is always established from the child side we call the many side as child side so a relationship field has to be created into the child side which is pointing to the parent so relationships are not created at the parent side parent side by seeing that table you will never know how many children are there or which which table they are associated with but when you are seeing a table there if there is a relationship field invariably it is a child and it is pointing to a parent here in this situation the contact is the child account is the parent so contact has a relationship field or relationship column which is pointing to the account we call this account now what should i store here should i store tcs should i store directly this name field or should i store something else i don't know it can be you can store purely the name field now salesforce does not recommend you to store a text field because you can mistype it relationship will be screwed so salesforce has taken the job to themselves so that there is data sanity integration so salesforce is saying no 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 i am creating a id for you just like a, your aadhar card you cannot create your aadhar card right india government will create the aadhar card for you you have no control on what numbers you can is there coming in your aadhar card similarly salesforce has is creating your id 
of the parent which you have to use on the child and that is called sales society in common short form you will always see this in a table automatically created by sales was called id every table will have it even contact has its id field this is automatically created by Salesforce. This is 18 character long, case insensitive version. There is a 15 character long case sensitive version is also there. Don't worry about it. Both are interchangeable. We will stick to 18 characters, case insensitive version. That means capital A, small a is the same. So 18 character long case insensitive ID is generated by alphanumeric ID is generated by Salesforce and it is stored in this table. So it is XXXX something something. That is the ID. For easy understanding, I will name it as R1. So there is a record ID which is get created by Salesforce automatically whenever you create a new entry into any table in Salesforce. This same ID you have to store here. So this table, this column is called account ID. You cannot store the name. You have to store the ID. So this column is very specific. This is a specific data type Salesforce has created for us, which is called two types of data as there, lookup or master detail. These are the two type of relationship fields. There is another type which we will not discuss now. It's an advanced topic. But there are mainly two types of relationship fields, which is lookup and master detail. When to use what, so what, that is exactly those classes will cover. Because in your trailhead, you will see what is master detail. In your trailhead, you'll see when is the lookup. But one to choose what is something we'll discuss in our class. Both are storing Salesforce ID. Same thing. Lookup is also storing R1. Master detail will also storing R1. But when will you choose a lookup? When will you choose a master detail? We'll gradually come to that later. Okay. So how will that look like? Let's see in an Excel sheet, right? I think uh, makes 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 some sense uh, to see this on Excel sheet. Do you is it making sense on this whiteboard or do you think going to Salesforce will make a little more sense? Let me know. So till now we have talked about three tables user account contact very good this is this is this is an account and contact has a one to many relationship it is denoted by this this sign it's a one side and many side okay so account and contact is one to many relationship all good so what is the relation between user, account, and contact? We'll discuss this later. I think uh, there are many, many different, but basic uh, things we'll cover first. So user, account, and contact are given tables by Salesforce. When tables are already given by Salesforce, you cannot also delete that table. When tables are given by Salesforce, those are called, all tables in Salesforce are called objects. So I will now stop using the term tables from now on. We will talk about a, for, about a, a thing called objects. So when I say objects, visualize it as a table. OK? A table give, or object already given by Salesforce, which you cannot de delete, that is called a standard object. Does it mean I cannot create my own table? Of course you can. If you create your own object, then it is called a custom object. So there are two kinds of tables or two kinds of objects. One is a standard object that is given by Salesforce automatically. It exists and you cannot delete it. Whether you use it or not, that's up to you. And you can create your own tables. That means you can create your own objects and those are called custom objects. In a, in a object, there are two different kinds of columns now columns in salesforce are called fields i will stop using the word columns from now on i will start using the term fields the fields are also two types one is standard fields another is custom fields fields means 
columns that is already given by Salesforce. This is called standard fields. And the custom fields are fields which is you can create. That means columns which you create. Now, standard fields and custom fields can be created and are there in both standard objects and custom objects. It, this can be a little confusing for you to realize. So let me go back to another sheet and understand this. So I have a standard object and I have a custom object. Custom object is a table created by me. Standard objects is a table already given by Salesforce. Standard objects, of course, has standard fields already because that table is given by there. So if there is a table, there are columns given by Salesforce. But on that table, you can also create custom fields. Think about account table. Account is a standard table. So you can create in your own fields on account table. In the contact table, you can create your own fields. In the user table also, you can create your own fields. That means on the same objects, you can create your own fields. Now you have created a new table, something like application, a custom object. It does not exist in Salesforce. So I have created a custom object called application. Automatically, when I create a custom object, that means a new table, Salesforce automatically creates some standard fields for them. OK, so custom objects also have standard fields. Please remember that. That table has been just created, but it has just been created with some standard fields by Salesforce. Automatically, Salesforce will put some standard fields inside it. And of course, you have created a table to create your custom fields, right? So you will definitely create custom fields on that table. So please remember, standard objects will have standard fields and custom fields. Custom objects will also have standard fields and custom fields. Any, con any, any questions so far? OK, very well. So we have already seen three standard objects till now. One is the account object, contact object, user object. Now let's get a little more deeper into a deal. Now I am selling. I'm talking about sales cloud. When I'm selling, I'm talking about a deal. Sometimes we call a deal an order also. Yeah. This order term is very confusing because it is used different ways in different organizations. So I will probably use a term deal. Deal is a better term, which does not confuse people. So I, what is it my deal? My deal is 100 maybe shoes and 200 caps because managers will sit in sun. They will not run. So I have 100 more caps to order, right? So, so Shiva is now coming to show, uh, Shobhanjit Ghos and saying that, OK, I had I need and I need to buy 100 shoes from Reebok and 200 caps. This is the same order. I will do it for my marathon event. OK. Now, this is what a deal is all about, right? In Salesforce, we store deal in a table again that is called opportunity. That is another object given by Salesforce, standard objects, of course. OK. So deal is stored in opportunity. Now, this is a little complicated. Because here, there can be, what are these shoes and caps? Gorab, what do you think these are? Gorab is there? Yes, sir. What are shoes and caps in Reebok's site? If you are a Reebok employee, how will you see shoes and caps? Sales product. Products, of course. So definitely Salesforce also has a table called product. OK, so I have another object, standard object, which is called product in Salesforce. That again, let's talk about those tables. First is my product. I will come to deal a little later. Again, the bare minimum information which you need to store is the name. And whenever this, this ID field is automatically created that we already talked about, right? So name is shoe. And this is cap. Now I am using generic shoe and generic cap, but let's 
think that exactly the soup will have a specific model. So it would be like a blue colored uh, uh, ranger uh, kind of shoe, something of that sort. Like that is something which we purchase, which is written in the, that is the product name. But I will use a generic term called a shoe. But I am talking about a specific shoe, a red shoe. Okay. And a specific cap, maybe a red cap. So one product. Okay. So this is not a product type. Product type is a different thing. Multiple products can have the same product. Type. So all these kits, boots, and everything are shoes. But I am talking about a single product which I am trying to sell. That is a shoe number. It should have. So shoe number 100, something of that sort. Cap number 200 is something. Specific model I am basically trying to sell here, right? So that is the item. Anyway, so this will also have a ID on that table, auto generated by Salesforce. Okay, now let us now revise, uh, rewind a little more. I will come to opportunity a little more later. But before that, there are some other tables to discuss. So when we have products list, now the first thing will come into your mind is the price, right? Price is the first thing which I have to take to my customer and show them. That is my menu card. When you run into a restaurant, the first thing you get is the menu, menu card, which shows your products. That is a catalog of your products. That is also something which is showing you the prices. Now, give me a reply. If I am selling in India and I am also selling in Bangladesh, Reebok is selling in India, Reebok is also selling in USA. Can I have the same menu card for both the countries? No, not, not the same menu card. It is not possible, right? Why? Because uh, one will be in USD, one will be in INR. Forget uh, different countries. Even uh, if, if, if Burger King has a shop in Bangalore and Burger King has a shop in a tier 3 city, the prices will be different. Right. When the prices are different, the catalog is different. So first, I have to define a catalog. Again, the catalog is stored in a table in Salesforce, which is called price book. For simplicity purpose, I am again, again, name field is mandatory here. In price book, I have two price book. One is for USA, one is for India. Now let us discuss about a relationship between product and price book. Where do you think you will put the price? Will you put the price in product table or will you put the price in price book table? Price book. Price book? Another mapping table. Hmm. She knows Salesforce a little more. So she's jumping it. Okay. Let's see why we cannot put this in price book. Why we cannot put this in table. If I put $20 here, do I know which it is $20 for which product? I do not know. So I have to have the information of the product, the information of the price book, and then only I can put a price to it. Right? So how will do I do this one? First, let's understand is the relationship between these two tables. Shoe is into the US catalog. Shoe is also into the India catalog. Cap is also into the US catalog. Cap is also into the India catalog. That means one shoe item is related to multiple items in the other table. That means one to many relationships. Isn't it? So product and price book is actually one to many relationship from product and price book terms. So product is the master, price book is the child. Now let us see that from the other direction. USA is associated with cap and shoe. USA contains cap and shoe. And USA also, uh, India also contains caps and shoes. So one item of this table 
is also associated to multiple items from this table. That means it is one to many relationship from this side. When two tables have one to many relationship from both sides, it is a many to many relationship. In Salesforce, we do not create a many to many relationship directly between tables. We use a third table called a mapping table or mapping object. That means price book will not have a lookup or a master detail field. Product will also not have a lookup or a master detail field. The relationship field will be here. So this will have product ID, price book ID. And how will this work? There are four values which you can create here. So shoe, actually it will not store shoe. It will store P1 and probably what is the PB1, PB2. So this will be PB1, P1, PB2, P2, PB1, P2, PB2. That already creates my many to many relationship, right? So one PB is associated to multiple items, and one PB1 is associated to multiple items both sides so one to many relationship from both sides that mean this table is basically a child of two tables one to many relationship from both sides so product is not the child of price book price book is not a child of product they exist separately, but there is a mapping table which is a child of two parents. That means two relationship fields are there minimum. That is how we define a mapping table, mapping object. Now let us revise. Where should you think is the best place to store the price? Mapping table. Why? Because I have which shoe I am selling, which price book is, is it? And I will store the price. $10. Cap price book to 100 rupees. Cap price book one, $20. Cap price book two, 2,000 rupees. easy relationship building, right? I can store the prices. So this is exactly how a catalog is laid across in Salesforce. There are three, three tables in consideration. One product table, one the catalog names, that is called price book. And last is the price book entry table. This is called price book entry, wherein actually the price is, is, is there, which is a mapping table between product and price book. Any confusion till now? I'm going through a lot of materials, I know. But this is getting recorded, so you can revise a number of times. But these concepts are very important to understand. Otherwise, you will not understand what is the relationship between these tables. Just creating some tables in software it does not make any sense. So product. Price book and price book entry is how I will now present and I will keep track of what products I am selling, in which geographies I am selling, and what is the price in each geographies. That information is now there with me. Going back to Shiva, Shovanji is selling to Shiva again. Now the order. We are talking about the deal. So how are we storing the deal? We are storing the same way. Here again. The relay, what is the relationship between a deal and a product? Why don't Korab give, give you a try? 
let's talk about the name again i will have shoe again and cap that is the id field p1 p2 and for this i will have a name field called deal1 deal2 it is also have id this table is called opportunity so there is two tables opportunity now and product table there is a two deal deal1 and deal2 deal1 is basically you can say that's august order or august deal or this month's deal anything they, every company will have a different naming convention of their deal so let's talk about deal1 and deal2 uh, deal1 is think about august deal a marathon which is happening in august and a marathon which is happening in december probably shiva is talking about both the deals now they are saying that i have two marathon events i will have different orders in two different events or i have probably doing the marathon in one in kolkata and one in Bengal bangalore so my deals will be bangalore order and kolkata order so there are two deals now getting discussed so opportunity will have two opportunities the same person is basically interested in both the deals same salesman is basically selling both the deals it can be different salesman also i don't care we'll come to that later but there are two events which is getting happened right so event one or event two event one event two there are two orders two deals which we are getting what is the relationship between these two deals and product table or of give a try one to many one one to many many to many what is that what is the relationship many to many why many to many because one deal there is uh, both product they are required and 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 one product have two kind of deals no let us look at it carefully this deal contains shoes and caps so one item one record or one row of opportunity table is associated to multiple rows into the product table. That means that deal is associated to multiple products. And this one product, that means it is a one to many relationship, right? This side. Now let us look at from the other side. This shoe is also related to two rows from this side right shoe will be purchased in bangalore marathon race also shoe will be purchased in the kolkata marathon race also the shoe will contain in both the teams that means one to many from both sides when what happens when we have one to many relationship from both sides it is a many to many relationship many -many. and when there is a many to many relationship we can not directly do that through the two tables what we do is that we have a mapping table this mapping table is called opportunity product usually that is how a mapping table is named it is named after two parents just put their name together and you define the name of the mapping table so it is opportunity product it will have two relationship fields one to uh, store opportunity id one to store proper uh, product id so o1 p1 o1 p2 o2 p1 o2 p2 simple that means shoe uh, sorry in deal one i have in shoe in deal one i also have caps in deal two, I have shoe. In deal two, I also have caps. Everything is stored now very well, pointing to the actual column. We are not storing names. We are storing IDs, as I said, because names are not dependable. Names can be duplicate. Names can be mistyped. That is where names are not used in Salesforce. Always, you have to use IDs and relationship tables to point to uh, the names stored in other tables. OK? Now, a critical critical element of a deal. There is a 100 quantity of caps in deal one, 
200 quantity of oh sorry the vice versa na? i said shoes will be less so 100 quantity of shoes and 200 quantities of caps so this is called quantity where will i store the quantity Oppor opportunity product or opportunity product opportunity product clear right in my opinion because i have here which deal which product what quantity which deal which product what quantity which deal which product what quantity which deal which product what quantity. so this table is critical because it stores quantity this table is critical because it stores the actual price these two tables are utilized so now let us look back and discuss what are the names of the standard objects we have discussed so far can you remember the names of the standard objects account account opportunity, opportunity. contact contact product price book price book great price book entry Anna. opportunity product right what else i did one two three four five six seven anything else user is also we discussed right uh did i miss anything we have discussed so far i think we uh, yeah so what are we storing in account recap company names right? company, company details, company details right? what are we storing in contact into contact person employees of the company right? What are we storing in product? Of course, product. What are we storing in price book? Yes. Catalog names. Right? What are we storing in price book entry? Actual price. What are we storing in opportunity? Deal names. What are we storing in opportunity product? Quantities. What are we storing in users? The different logins, right? Who are login? Logins are probably the employees of the seller organization. So buyer organization are stored in contact, seller organizations are stored in users. Clear differences, right? Very easy to understand. One important uh, standard objects which we need to discuss today before we wrap up the sales uh, thing is that the sales journey does not start directly start with the account and contact. There is a thing called prospect. What is a prospect? Prospect is a person who may or may not become your customer. So CRM is a customer relationship management. What is the point of discussing prospects, which is not our customer still? What is the benefit of discussing a storing prospect information in Salesforce. What do you think is, does it make any sense? Maybe sir, I, I think no. Priyanka, why do you think prospect information needs to be stored in Salesforce in a CRM? It's not a customer. Shiva, you want to talk talk about why prospect is necessary in CRM? Two things. One is that uh, he can be a future customer. That is not probably you can evaluate whether in the whether the company is part of this has a potential. But basically, the evaluating the aspect of the potential of the company. So you would still want to kind of track that as to what you have done and convert it to a customer. A customer could be a somebody who's already using the service or not using the code in both cases. 
agreed a potential customer a person is a potential customer now let's look at a salesman's life and shiva is one of them he is selling salesforce in salesforce itself so the first journey will start with creating this prospect in salesforce the prospect is stored in another table called lead okay so lead is a person who has who has probably not purchased the product or he you have not converted that to a customer it has it will go under conversion it will become a customer it may or may not become a customer so why we want to store the lead information for two i think there are two reasons two or more there are many reasons in fact but primary reasons would be first and foremost is that i have the potential of hitting this person again and again if i do not store that person's information this will be lost data right so i want to go back at some point when a customer is saying no in sales world we say not today no does not mean no forever so customer is saying no today so the customer may be interested tomorrow right so we need to have a prospect information to the system so that i can reach out to that person again and again and they, they, that data needs to be securely stored that is the reason the possibility of converting the person in future future conversion second i need to analyze the reason why they said no if i am not storing the reasons why they said no my sales channel will never improve so analytics i need to see why the customers are, are saying no to me and how many times are they saying no to me third is sales people's performance evaluation a person a salesman most of his day is basically spending with leads he is not actually spending time with customers and probably in sales what we say if you go to 10 customers you will probably make one person a customer so 10 leads will approach one of them will become your customer it's a, like a 1 to 10 ratio in any any industry i don't know uh, there can be other metrics also but usually that would be the case so 10 person you reach out only one person will buy from you so if that is the case how will the sales manager know what my sales executives are actually working throughout the day if you are not storing the data in salesforce so that is also a reason why we want to understand what are the leads or the potential prospects potential customers that we are actually working on and what is the stage they are in are they are closer are they really Uh, like closing in or we are completing that very quickly are we moving it to customers do they need any kind of help to close a deal that is something which we will ta talk so lead is a qualification stage wherein you understand the interest of the customer if that customer is interested you will, will migrate or convert that to a opportunity opportunity may or may not be closed it does not matter but a qualified lead is an opportunity a, what is a qualified lead qualified lead is a interested person so whenever a lead is qualified you will move this to a conversion lead conversion and you will create three records in salesforce one account one contact and one opportunity a lead a, in lead you will have a company information and a person's in, information that confirm company information will create the account the lead itself will become the contact and an opportunity will also be created now we'll see all this today in salesforce give me one second enough of whiteboard it's time to see salesforce Are you seeing my screen? If you know, yes. if you go to Trailhead, if you are registered into Trailhead, you can go there on the top right. When you are logged in, you will go to hands-on orgs. Uh, you can create 
to when you go to there, you can create a playground here. This will be your instance of your Salesforce. That means a new org will be created for you. Okay. There are different editions. We'll discuss this a little later. I think it's too early for us. I think I gave. I create a new to let's let's create a playground. So I will say batch 28 is my playground and I will give it a create. It takes a while to create a playground, but actually it will get created. I will not wait uh, till this getting created. Oh, sorry, I will launch it. So this is the, my old org. I will launch it. This will directly take you to a playground Salesforce org. You see, normally the sales app is there. Sales app is basically coming from Sales Cloud. This is the app launcher, just like in your mobile phones, you have different apps. In Salesforce, also, you will see different apps. One of the apps is Sales, this one, which when you give, this is basically it will open up different tabs. An app in Salesforce is just a group of tabs. These are the tabs on the top. Like every tab is basically usually related to an object. We talked about account object, right? This is the account table. You see, this is the contact table or contact object. This is the opportunity table. We discuss about this. This is where we are storing the deal. Uh, you change this uh, view. There are different views possible. All opportunities, all contact, and you can pin it. Then you don't have to change again and again. Pin means it uh, all accounts and pin this. Then whenever you come back to this page again, then it will show this view. Right? There can be different views. Otherwise, always it will be a recent contact view. Means the last record which you are talking about. There are other objects will come to that data, but we also discussed this one, right? It starts the Salesforce journey probably starts with lead. The salesman's journey probably will start from the lead. Let's see that. What I will do, I will start from the potential of a deal. So I will talk to Shiva, who is basically doing the deal. Uh, Shobhanjit Ghosh. Now, Shobhanjit Ghosh is not there. So probably on image bank, he will take over as salesman. So you see, the last name and the company name are the only two mandatory fields in lead. Okay, so the fields are not mandatory. You can make it mandatory if their organization needs it. So lead status is mandatory, but it is already populated with a not contacted value. You don't have to populate anything. So a new lead is getting created. What is this bar? This bar is actually this field, lead status field, exactly the same thing. Whatever you are seeing here, this is ex actually the same statuses. Okay, so you can change here and make it market status complete. It will change here also. You see, same thing. You can change from here also, and it will go back. Yeah, it will reflect here. So this bar and this field is connected. Okay. So here is basically you are storing the different field values. You can go ahead and uh, change in line. Or you can hit the edit button. You can make changes. If you are making a lot of field changes using edit button, one field changes, you can directly go and do this. This is inline editing. This is edit button. So we can create a lead by going to this page using this button or here, new lead. Same window opens up. Okay. So lead he from here or from here. Please note that he clicking on here will open the list view. Clicking on here will open the drop down option. So many people like click here all the time. So you have to click on this to basically see the full uh, tab. This tab is populating data from an object, right? These are different uh, rows of that object. Rows in Salesforce are called records. So I will start using the term records from now on. Okay. So tables are objects, columns, names are fields, and rows of that table are records. Okay. Please remember and 
understand these three naming conventions very well because from now on we will use these terms so now let's see the journey so i have created shiva who is my potential lead who will probably go and i will try to sell right so i talk i call shiva and i logged a call what are these i will come to this later i said he is interested one activity i have done this is another table called activity so on which is again related to lead table we'll discuss this later you can have duplicates for a potential check we'll see this later and what we'll doing is that we are saying that i am working on this lead and then finally i have converted this lead whenever i do a conversion you see the field value tcs is basically driving the account creation the contact is basically getting stored as the lead uh, values of first name and last name is getting stored in contact and there is a deal value which i may or may not create if i don't want to create i will take this one but i want to create right i will say bangalore marathon status needs to be something so this status is the lead status which i will say converted whenever i convert a lead if there is a validation error i have a problem on this or because i have created a lot of fields so i will not create this i will go back to this one there are a lot of validation rules which we have created for the last batch so we'll restart sorry about it i think i will switch back so whenever you launch this you will first see this allow always allow this notifications uh, you are on the playground starter starter uh, you can get your login credentials also you have to do this reset my password whenever you do a reset to your, your password you will get a mail okay uh, on a gmail or whatever email id you are using uh, uh, that whenever you reset that password then you can log in to salesforce you don't have to launch it by, by again and again from this trailhead. You can directly use the login.salesforce.com and you can use this username and the password which you reset for yourself. So this page is important, which you can do, use it. Otherwise, what you do is you shift to sales and that is that is where we start this once again. I will create the lead very quickly. This time I will use this one. I have a Shiva this time, a little nuance, and TCS again. So my object is created. I am converting it again. This time it is saying TCS CTS, and I will say Bangalore. Now. Right. What happens is that the three records are created in three objects now. An account is created, a contact record is also created, an opportunity record is also. These are three records in three different tables. Okay, it is breaking information from my lead, and it is automatically created. created. Usually, I will go and check uh, the opportunity directly because I will continue the journey in opportunity. But let's see what is there in account. Account is where you will store your company information. Maybe you are now getting a phone number. You store it here. You will getting the website of the company. You want to store it here. Right. We'll use this again and again for this company because deals will be different, but the company information will remain the same, right? So you will always keep on updating this account, uh, this company information. Now in this related tab, you can see the child. So in the child, you are seeing this one. Shiva is already there. Uh, maybe you are working with multiple contacts. So you will see, you'll go here. And uh, probably Priyanka is the, my next contact in TCS. She's also working in TCS. She's the finance head. So I am talking to two different people. So I am now creating two contacts under this. This contact can be created from here also. OK. Contact table is also there. Here, contact new button is also there. You can create this from here. The only difference between creating from account page and creating directly from contact page that you see when you are creating in the contact page the account is not filled up you have to go and search but if you are already creating from the account page in the related tab 
you will see the account is already auto populated for you so that is the benefit of creating the contact child records from parent otherwise you can directly create a child record from their individual tab itself okay that can also happen so if i now create another entity from here maybe uh sort of is ganguly right uh so i now search tcs and save it if i go back to my account later and check tcs here i will see all the three items so even if i have created from here it doesn't matter so now I can also see the opportunity because one account is related to multiple contacts. So one to many relationship. One account is also has a many relationship with opportunities. One to many relationship. Now let us now go to opportunity. This is my opportunity tab. It has its own uh, journey. This is again a tab which is actually the status field, the state field, right? If I make this into qualification, Two things happen one is that this will change to here second is the probability move will keep on updating so if i move it to need analysis you see probability is changing from 10 to 20 percent automatically you have shifted it is moving here so i have keep on working and i'm doing that now here i am adding products adding products is basically getting saved in opportunity product field it is actually opportunity product mapping field it is getting stored right so don't get uh, so i have a add product when i add a product first i have to choose a price book choose a price book you can go for the standard price book this was all, all automatically gives you a standard price book by default and then i can choose a dot lot of products Salesforce have already this orgs have a lot of products created so we can go ahead and there is a product tab to create products okay we'll show that later so <clears throat> i can select my product so this is giving a list of all my products and the list price. So where are these information coming from? Any idea? Which tables? Which objects? Price book entry. Price book entry, right? The prices are stored in price book entry. And the product is stored in product table. So this information uh, is basically price book entry table, which is basically giving us product information as well as price information. So when I select this now it is asking me to give the quantity quantity is stored in which table product and opportunity okay. so opportunity product table right so this is actually getting stored in product and this is where i have now added two products and finally i mark it as closed and that is how a sales plan will work in salesforce broadly this is the Thing. There is many nuances, many nitty gritties, but this is how basically a salesman will be using Salesforce. Now, your job by learning this training session is to first understand how a salesman works. Without it, you cannot change the experience of a salesman. But your office is not there. You will not create leads, you will not create opportunity, you will not create any of these records. These records are always created by the salespeople your job is to change the software just like in a mobile phone you have a settings you have to go and change uh, things on your phone similarly salesforce changes will occur in this button called setup when you click this is where you change the software okay any changes which is happening inside setup is basically a metadata change that means a change to the software itself what is metadata i will give it a little more in the next session i have already overwhelmed you well, a lot of information please go and revise it uh, do not worry if some things are not very clear please ask me in the second session and we will go through this in more detail we'll see what actually are we storing in the database in the next class yeah but this is the overview the paperwork and how it looks like in Salesforce. But we'll dig deeper in the next Any questions so far?